All right, hey coders, we should have our React Native template script ready to go. I've let it finish installing since the last video, and I've just let it resolve all those node modules. We have CD'd into the directory for the project now, and we're gonna have to go ahead and install some dependencies for the full stack, or the full app we're creating here, the entire app walkthrough we're gonna go through. It's going to require a React navigation, as at the newest version, I believe, is 3.0. I should probably check before I say that, right? Yeah, it's a 3x, so it's on the th version 3. So it has a big change up from version 2, where your stack navigator used to be a function you would create inside of your app, like your root app.jsx or app.tsx. These days it actually is a higher order component that you create on its own file and then you import into your main app and use from there. So we're gonna go over on how to use React Navigation to create a stack navigator. So talking about some general terms when it comes to Navigation React on your you know, your mobile device, the tabs will be on the bottom of the screen, a drawer will be something that can slide in or out from the left or right hand sides. And the stack navigator would be the header on top essentially, where you click a button on the screen, it navigates to that screen, it gives you a back option in the top of your device and like some kind of header on top that tells you where you are, right? And then it can be a little bit confusing at first as there are a lot of nested objects that you have to customize. So it can get a little bit hairy, but we'll take it slow and discuss what's happening and use the documentation to get us through the pain points of using React Navigation. But once you figure it out, it's really not that bad. Just a, a big hurdle to jump, but once you've gotten over it at least once, it's really not that bad. So we're gonna go ahead and get this guy installed. So we need to go to the getting started and I'll be using um, NPM rather than Yarn as their demos here. So I'm literally just going to be copying and pasting their installs for in NPM install dash dash save React Navigation. So I'm gonna go back to my directory and write that. And while I'm here, I'm going to actually also do at types slash React Navigation, which it does have its typing, so I've checked before. We also need to have this React Native Gesture Handler right here. Now I've checked and this does not have typing, so all we have to do is just add this at the end right here. There we are. And no additional steps required for iOS. And before we actually get there, we need to actually link React Native Gesture Handler. So I'm gonna let these guys run. And like I had mentioned in the previous set of videos in Intro to React Native, you have to do this thing called linking. Anything that extends or builds upon these native components will need to be linked or referenced in your Android and Xcode projects. So I'm just gonna run this react-native link, React Native Gesture Handler. So it has a reference to this gesture handler and it should go just fine. And as we see in the getting started guide here, there are no additional steps required for iOS devices. So if you're working on an iOS device in Xcode, you're good to go. For those of us on Android, we need to finalize the installation of the gesture handler in your Android projects. So we have to make sure we make the necessary modifications in the main activity.java file. So let's go ahead and open up the code editor and try and find this guy. I'll be doing this pretty much live in these videos, so you'll get to watch me potentially struggle with some of what we're doing here. But it'll be a good chance to learn how to debug these issues, because when you're working with something like React Native, something this new, you're gonna be running into a lot of issues. So a lot of red screens, a lot of copying and pasting errors, and a lot of Googling and GitHub tracking to find out what you're experiencing, are others also experiencing it, and how to fix it. And just like with anything else in developing, you'll get better at avoiding the problems and even better at finding out what the problem is. So it mentioned we needed to jump into mainactivity.java. Cool, so if we pop into app here and our source, so Android app source is where we can find our Android project. Let me zoom in a little bit there, make sure y'all can see. Java and we want main activity.java. And I'll install the extension for this later as I haven't actually coded Java in my VS code at any point in time. But it looks like all we have to do is bring in these imports here. So I'm gonna do these one at a time and we just bring them in on the imports up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There we go. One more time, another import. Then we gotta bring in all of this right down here. Should not be too much of a problem. And it goes beneath the other override outside the curly brace. So after the other override protected string, there we go. 
And you could just copy the whole thing and delete those plus signs because you, you'll be end up copying that text as well. I am taking the slightly longer but lazier route where I don't have to worry about formatting tabs or spaces and getting rid of and highlighting and finding and deleting all those plus signs. There we go. <laughs> the links we will go to to do certain things, am I right? I should close, let's see. That will close this guy. That will close that guy and that will close this dude. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna save the file before I forget like I did before. And we're gonna go ahead and pop out of that, collapse our Android tree there, and we theoretically should be good to go. Okay, and the next thing I'm gonna be using for this demo is a nice cross-platform UI kit called React Native Elements. Uh, while it doesn't provide a whole heap of layout tools and things like that, its entire goal is to extend some of the base React Native components like button and text and other things like that and allow them to be highly customizable and cross-usable. And even say they're cross-usable across both Android and iOS and even sub web browsers. So, you know, I like this library. It's a lot of fun to work with. And I found that as you begin customizing it further and further, it actually has less issues than native base. Not to say that native base is bad if you're creating a small five to six screen app for a friend or a family member or even for a project for your portfolio getting up and running very quickly and layout wise using native base is very easy anyway let's go ahead and pop into their documentation and watch for their installation what do you know we're going to click on our react native cli tab as that's what we're installing from and we do indeed have this nice little npm install save react native and I'm actually gonna move the save over. I should just type this out now that I think about it, but chez la vie. And I don't actually know if, off the top of my head if this is typed or not, but we're gonna find out anyway. I'm gonna install the types if they exist. There we go. And we also need to have React Native Vector icons. This is a nice peer dependency you're gonna want as you can use these nice icons. So you can have like a little Twitter icon, Facebook icon, the Google icon, little phone icons like hamburger icons, anything you can think of that kind of gives some life to your app you're gonna to want to have available. So we're gonna install that. And let's see if there's some typings for that as well. We will know very quickly if we get some big old fat errors from NPM as we install these packages. Looks like we're good to go, however. Nice. And as you probably know, we're going to have to link these icons into both of our projects. So I'm going to do a React Native link, React Native vector icons command, so we can link and reference this dependency into both our Xcode project and our Android project. And with those two, Several steps to install two dependencies. I mean, the whole point of this video is to install React Navigation and React Native Elements, but I wanted to take it slow and show you guys all the extra steps you had to do. I had an issue in the past with some node module resolution, which I will try to boot up in the next video and we can see if we can get past it together or if it doesn't happen anymore. So see you then.